in the sanctuary, to be in the house of God. Praise God. Thank the Lord that we were able to meet outside. We had the room to do it, uh, but it was hard with competing with the traffic and uh, the wind blowing all my notes all over the place. But, okay, we're back in the house to give praise and worship to the Lord. Anyone else? I also want to thank the Lord for touching my wife, Ruth. We still do not have answers yet. Uh, the surgeon's supposed to call her sometime next week. Uh, she had a scan yesterday, and they'll get the results, and then he's going to call her. But he did tell us that he doesn't know what it is. He looked in her ear and said, wow. And then he told her, he said, I've never seen something like this. He said, we've seen cysts in the ear and other things that are, but she said, nothing like this. He said, I'm not sure what it is. So he kind of touched around it with an instrument, and he said, we're going to have to have a scan so that I can know what I'm dealing with. But he said, whatever, it still will have to come out surgically. But we're just believing and trusting God that everything's going to be fine. Amen. All right. I'd just like to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one that is joining with us to this evening for our Wednesday night service at Bethany Assembly of God. It's indeed our privilege to have you with us. I want to speak to you tonight on the subject, shattered faith, shattered faith. The last several months, many people have just had shattered, excuse me, shattered hope, had their hope shattered. They've started businesses, just really got several of them, just really getting going. Then they had to shut them down. And many of them lost everything they had, everything they'd invested. Their dreams were shattered. Others, different reasons, have had their hope shattered. Well, let's take a look at the Word of God tonight. Turn with me, if you will, in your Bibles to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. Just a moment, I'm going to share that with you, but I want to remind you. This setting of Scripture takes place after Jesus had been crucified. After he had been crucified. For three and a half years, the disciples have followed Jesus. They've been with him day and night for three and a half years. They've witnessed the miracles that he performed. They heard and witnessed the answers to prayers that people had sought him with. They saw the power and glory of God upon him. They believed, the disciples and many others believed, that Jesus was going to be the king of Israel. He had come to be king to set them free from Roman rule. That's what they believed. That's what they were looking for to him for and believing. So you can imagine what they must have felt when they saw him on the cross. I believe that the words spoken by the two disciples on the Emmaus Road were the sentiments of all of the disciples and the followers of Jesus when Jesus was crucified. Chapter 20, Luke chapter 24, let's listen to verse 21. The two disciples are walking on the, on the road going to Emmaus and they're talking to each other, sharing their thoughts and what they had hoped and what they had believed. Okay, All of a sudden Jesus appears and is walking with them. They didn't recognize him. The Bible said their eyes were behold so that they could not recognize him. And they, he asked them, why, did, why are you so sad? What's going on? Okay. They explained to him what had happened. Verse 21 said, But we hoped that it had been he who should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Okay. What are they talking about? It? What are they talking about? What has happened in Israel? What was happening in Israel when Jesus was born? Rome had taken over Israel. They were cruel. The Romans were cruel to the Israelites. They took everything they had. They mistreated them. They beat many of them. 
They'd come through the, some of the towns and anything they saw they wanted, they took it. Okay. They tortured the Israelites. Darkness, oppression, demon possession, and all the cruelty of Rome is what they faced every day, every day. The people, many of the people of Israel were crying out to God, crying out to God for deliverance. I want to say, share with you tonight, I believe that right here in America tonight, there are many people that are crying out to God to deliver us from all that's going on right now. All of the, the rioting, all of the, the killings, all the violence, everything that's going, people are crying out to God. Lord, deliver us from this. I wonder, and I was sharing with Ruth today, I wonder how many, how many Christians are crying out and asking him, Lord, send rapture the church to take us out of here. Lord, take us out of all, all away from all of this that's going on. I believe that many in Israel were crying out to, to God to deliver them from the problems, to deliver them from Roman rule. Okay. When Jesus began to preach and to teach the gospel, many believed and followed him. When they saw all the miracles that he was doing, when they saw the power and the glory of God upon them, they began to believe and follow him. When he chose his 12 disciples, the Bible said they left all and followed Jesus. I ask you to think about that for a moment. They left all. That means they quit their jobs. That means that they left their families to follow Jesus. I remind you of James and John that were in the boat mending their nets with their father. When Jesus walked by, he looked at them and said, come and follow me. The Bible said they left their father, they left their boat, and they followed Jesus. The disciples left all to follow him. Okay. Why? Why would they do that? Because when they saw all the miracles, when they saw all the power of God on him, they believed that he was the deliverer of Israel. They didn't believe or look to him as the Messiah. They just believed that he was going to be the deliverer from, of Israel from all of the Roman rule, that he would be king in Israel. Shattered hope. Can you just imagine for a moment, can you just imagine how they must have felt when they saw Jesus hanging on that cross? Here is their hope. Here is their hope. All the things that they had hoped for, all the things that they had trusted him for because of their misunderstanding. And they see him hanging there on the cross. Now they have left everything. Now they are empty. They are alone with no hope. They were hiding in fear of their own lives, afraid that the Romans would come and take them and kill them like they had killed Jesus. I want you to listen to their words. Let's look at Luke's gospel again. Verse 21. But we hoped, hear that, but we hoped that it had been he who should have redeemed Israel. And besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Can't you feel the despair? Can't you feel that the, the loss of everything that they had hoped for? as they're talking and sharing with Jesus. Let's take a look at again. I ask you to think about Mary Magdalene for a moment. Okay, what does the Bible tell us? You talk about shattered hope, shattered dreams. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 2 tells us that when Mary Magdalene first met Jesus, she was possessed by seven demons. Seven demons. Okay. Her life was a life of suffering and torment. Suffering and torment. The devil's whole purpose was to destroy her. Can you imagine what she must have lived like? The torments that she was under. The fears that she went through. Every day. 
Nothing to look forward to. Nothing to hope for. Do you remember the Bible tells us about the demonic of Gadara? A legion of demons possessed him. He lived in the graveyard, slept in the tombs. He was so miserable that he would cut himself with rocks and stones until Jesus came by. Until Jesus came by. One day, one day for Mary Magdalene, one day, Jesus came and set her free. And she was so happy, she was so happy to be healed and restored that she became a follower of Jesus. Everywhere Jesus and the disciples went, she followed him. It was Mary Magdalene, <clears throat> excuse me, that stayed and watched with a broken heart as Jesus was crucified. <clears throat> she followed and watched as they buried him in the tomb. I ask you, so great was her love for Jesus. What she went through, talk about shattered hope. Okay. Who is it that was first at the sepulcher on the, on the third day? Who is it that the first at the sepulcher? John tells us, John's Gospel, chapter 20 and verse 1. John's Gospel, chapter 20. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, and to the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Think about it. She loved him so much, she wanted to be there. Perhaps she just wanted to, to sit outside the tomb and, and just talk to him. Just talk to him. Just to share her love to him, and what he had meant to her, and what to be thankful for what he had done. Okay. Now, we must read the scriptures so that we can really get a feeling for what was happening. So let's go to John's Gospel, chapter 20. And I want to begin reading at verse 21. We're going to read through verse 18. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, early, while it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. And so, so they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. Go on, please. Then Jesus saith unto them. Uh, we we'll missed the script. But, and he said unto them, cast the net. Oh, no, we're, we're off there. John's Gospel, chapter 20. And he stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes laying yet when he went not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen cloth lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying were the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciple went away again into their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? 
Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if you have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, that, she had, that he had spoken these things unto her. I ask you to think with me about this for a few minutes. Mary would not leave the tomb. And she would purpose that I'm not leaving until I find out where he is. Where he is. Can you imagine how she must have felt when she saw the angels? When they spoke to her. But even greater still, when Jesus spoke, Jesus said to her, Mary. He said, Mary. In a way that only Jesus can speak to a broken heart. He knew what Mary was going through. He knew her brokenness. He knew her pain of her heart and suffering. And in love and compassion, he says, Mary, in tenderness. And immediately, Mary knew who he was. Okay. I can just almost feel Mary's heart rejoicing at hearing his voice. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He's alive. He's alive. Every one of us can say that tonight. He's alive. He's our Lord and our Savior, and He is alive. He's alive. Hope and joy are restored. Again, the words of the disciples on that Emmaus road express the feelings of all the disciples as Jesus reveals himself to them alive. What did they say as they be, after Jesus had left them and they began to talk about it? What did they say? Did not our heart burn within us as he expounded the scriptures to us? Say, Pastor, what does that mean to us tonight? What does that mean to us? Let's take a look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103, and I want to read verses 1 through 6. What does it mean to us? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Listen to that. And forget not all his benefits. Okay. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Folks, the Bible is full of promises that God gives to us, describing the benefits that are ours because He is our Lord and our Savior, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all those who are oppressed. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, forget not all of his benefits. How blessed we are tonight to know him as our Lord and our Savior. How blessed we are to have the gift of eternal life. This life that we're living in the flesh now is not the end of it, folks. God has a great plan for us. Heaven, heaven, throughout all eternity to be with Jesus. As I think about it and as I was going over this and I think about it, 
The song of the Gaithers comes to my mind. The words of the song. Because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Now let's stop and think about it for a minute. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. We do not know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know. We're hearing all kinds of, of rumors. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. There are some definite things that have been told us that, that are going to happen. And all of this, we have to keep focused on Jesus. Keep knowing that because he lives we can face tomorrow. You say, why do you say that, Pastor? Because He, Jesus, will give us the strength to face whatever we have to face. He will give us the ability to go through it, to be able to handle it. He's still in control. He's still Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And we are still His children. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. That expresses it beautiful to every one of us. So I want to say to tonight, to you that are hurting, to you that are discouraged, to you that are without hope, there may be some listening to us tonight that are in those positions. Because of everything that's going on, they've lost all hope. But I want to share with you. Jesus is the answer. No matter what you're going through, no matter what has happened to you, no matter what you are facing, Jesus is the answer. He can take care of it. He can see us through it all. He's going to provide everything that we have need of. Somebody said to my wife this week, you need to, to buy Make sure you have plenty of food on hand, other things that are necessary, because what's going to be happening here in the very near future? You know what my wife's answer was? She said, honey, I don't worry about it. God's going to take care of us. He made a promise. But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus doesn't matter what's happening around us. He's still in control. We're still his children, and he's going to take care of us. We don't have to face shattered hope. Jesus is our hope. Listen. Listen to what Peter tells us. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Listen to what he tells us. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. You see, in the midst of everything that's going on, when fear is gripping the hearts of those that are unbelievers that do not know Jesus nor understand the Word of God, and they see you and they see that, that you're not giving in to fear, okay? he says, be ready. When they ask you, what is, where, what is your hope? How do you have that kind of hope? Just be ready to give them an answer. And that answer is Jesus Christ. He is my Lord, my Savior, and my provider. Listen again to the words of the song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Do you believe that? Say it with me. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. He is our hope. He is our purpose. Father, tonight I thank and praise you that our hope, our trust, our confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our provider. Providing everything that we have need of. And we give you all the praise and the glory for it. I'm asking, may the Holy Spirit quicken the truth of this message to every individual that is hearing it tonight. And Lord, if there be those that 
who have lost their hope. There will be those that are wondering, fretting over, what am I going to do? May they realize tonight that Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ, is their answer. May they turn to him with all of their heart. Jesus will meet them. I ask it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. I want to remind you, we'll be having service here Sunday morning in the sanctuary, but we will also be streamlining the service. So we ask you to join with us again next Sunday morning. God bless you. And thank you for being with us this evening.